like we said, the incarnating being, many generations before, has to start to find, with the help of other spiritual beings who are their guides, has to find the right mother and father. And everyone that incarnates has to be more male or female. Some of us really male, some of us really female. To, it, to, in the modern times, it's getting more complicated, more confusing. It used to be you had to have a male and a female come together to start to create a body for a new child. Now you can take eggs from a female, put them in another female, take the sperm from a female, put them in. You can do lots of things with our new technology. I told you our society is changing so much that all the old forms are getting not so strong, are mixing. The, the earth is really changing. So where a normal incarnation process might take 500 years before, until the earth culture had changed so much, now it's, people are reincarnating much sooner to be in the new change situation. You know, they used to say an incarnation was a thousand years. You think of incarnating in ancient China with all the dynasties, a thousand years, you would, you would have some change. No? That was because there were two incarnations. So we'll do it, we'll do it like this. Male, So this, there was an active and a more passive incarnation. Mm -hmm. So like twice in 1,000 years. Yeah. So that's why I said 500 years. So in a cultural period, you needed to experience a new cultural period as a man and as a woman because it was so different. And it used to be that the male was the active, organizing, doing force. The female was the receptive, the nurturing, carrying for. Now look what's happening. Actually more and more the female is becoming more and more active and the male is becoming more passive. Yeah. You don't need two incarnations in one. You now, now the active incarnation can be the female. Oh, in a time of change you also have chaos. Old forms have to fall away and new forms come into being. So now there's a lot of chaos between male and female. I don't know what it's like in Asia, but in the West, many, many young people are born now and they think they're in the wrong body. They think they should be female and they're in a male body, or they think they should be male and they're in a female body. And they can actually now have operations. And they feel completely at home, completely changed. You know, and uh, when I'm preparing <coughs> these courses, I go to lectures in uh, Dornach in uh, Switzerland where it's the center of anthroposophy. I go to lectures by the anthroposophical doctors about the, their work. And one very famous anthroposophical doctor, he, I went to his lectures on child development, and he said, it's a very important that a young child has a male and a female model when they're growing up. But he said, it can be two females, homosexuals, that." Have this operate, that have the egg sperm operation, but one is more male and one is more female. And he said, and you know, one, you know, one is right all the time and the other one says, okay, okay. Because, yes, we have biologically male and female, but we have these male and female principles. And I'm going to show you in embryology how these are always working in every aspect. So you remember in my, just do the, now we talk about this, First polarity, and this polarity is very important in the astral world. So what does this polarity look like? So if you have the human body here, the female organ looks something like that, yeah? Reproductive organ. Reproductive organ. And the male reproductive organ looks something like that. It's reversed, and it's outside the body, and this is inside the body. Like I told you, when the embryo is first developing in these ovaries, so here you have the testicles, and here you have the ovaries. Now you know there's a, a time in the embryo, in the, um, the 
fetus. Yes. The fetus development, although in the cells it's already been determined, it's male or female, in the body it's not yet determined. So you have an organ here that can go both ways. It can come out of the body or it can come into the body. This, this coming inside and making a space inside is called an invagination. And this going outside, pushing out, is called budding. And we'll see later, we'll look at how, how the arms and the legs and the hands work out of this body with invagination all around them, and how inside the eye and the ear, you have all of these sense organs that are invagination processes. The same principle as this, the outside coming inside, the inside going outside. You always have this invagination process or this budding process. Uh, and even in your massage, you have this polarity. Uh, so you can see, starting with the sexual reproduction, these are the same organs inside out. Here you have another polarity, here with the testicles and the ovaries. From the ovaries come the eggs, the female egg. Every month, an egg will be set free and go down the these are called the fallopian tubes. I won't use all the English terms because you have the Chinese terms, but go down these tubes, yeah? Every month, an egg is let loose. So, yeah? And we'll talk about that whole process. And I told you, already in the very small fetus, the ovaries are full of thousands and thousands of eggs, but they get reduced, just like the souls coming down to Earth. It gets denser and denser. I can't impress upon you enough. This isn't so physical in the beginning. This is all fluids and gases and warmth and very, very, very fine physical structures. So originally, in the fetus, these egg cells are, are dividing and producing and generating, and then they start to reduce. And by the time, let's say, that you become sexually mature at 14. I know it changes all the time now. And you reach menopause at 45, yeah? 50, 50, yeah? That's 36 years. 36 times 12. All right, so let's say 400. Yeah? So you actually produce only 400 eggs in your whole lifespan, female. Well, what about here? Here we have egg, here we call these sperm. Every ejaculation, every time the sperm comes out, how many times does the sperm come out of a man? Yeah? Every time, 300 million. So we can't, we can't calculate this. <laughs> this is, yeah, from the time you are, I don't know, uh, 12, 13 years old until you die, yeah? It's enormous, yeah? And these eggs, this is the largest cell in the human body, the female egg. You can see it with your naked eye. It's, it's, you can see the little egg, yeah? Yeah. yeah? But these sperms, very, very small, yeah? But very, very mobile, very, very quick. They have little tails. They have their own mobility. These are at rest, yeah? These eggs. They, they can't move, they just fall from here. They fall with gravity down through the water. Sorry? Ah, they have little villi that move. Now that's when they get, um, that's when they get impregnated. Yeah? The villi come out, we'll talk about that. But when it first starts to, it's just an egg, yeah? Okay, so here's the egg, and it has a tiny little nucleus. And here's the sperm. Yeah. So these are big, they are at rest, they are beautiful balls, yeah. and there are very, very few of them. Yeah, really. These are very small, very fast, very active, many, many, many of them. Now, how do these develop? They start from normal, we say, stem cells. They're, they're, they are cells that could become anything, yes? In both the in the ovary and the testicles, they start from a stem cell, from a, you might say, an archetypal cell. And they lose half, maybe I better talk about the cell. So in a normal cell, you have a nucleus, a 
and you have the cell body. Oh, you know this? So m all of our cells have some kind of cell body in all of our tissues. I better even tell you this. So you know you have you have you have what are called organelles. Now, these are, there are many little tiny organs inside the cell here. And the biggest one is the nucleus. Now then you just have free plasma, free substance, with nutrients in it. But you have little organelles here. And then you have the cell. So many cells make a tissue, many organelles make a cell. And tissues make organs. And organs make organisms. Yeah? So here we have the whole human being or plant or animal as the organism. And the organism has organs and the organs is made of special kinds of cells that make up tissue and there you have the cell and inside the cell you have the organelles. Now, this is just a picture of a cell but the cells are many, many different kinds of cells with, with different forms here and different organelles here but they all have a cell body and they all have a nucleus. And the nucleus has chromosomes in it. <coughs> I think it's 48 in the normal. Yeah. It's on your chromosomes that your proteins called DNA, yeah, that the DNA is in these chromosomes. Now when you grow, so you when you grow something, when any of your cells grow, they split and they grow. So they first split here, yeah? And the chromosome split so that it, it splits in half and you have two cells now the same kind and you still now have 48 and 48 here because these split apart. And then you each have the same number. So this is growth. <coughs> the cell divides and you have the same each, si each side, yeah? These cells to be alive, it's very important the ratio between the nuclear substance and what's called the cell, the, the cytoplasm, the, 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 the plasm inside the cell, the substance and the organelles inside. There has to be the right ratio. Okay? Now, what's special about these, you could call them sex cells, yes, is that they only have one half. And the sperm is almost all nucleus, almost all chromosomes. So it, was, it started from a normal cell, and it, it lost all of its cytoplasm, all of its, what was around it. It has very few organelles. It's mostly just the genetic material. Yeah, it, has, it has a little tail, so this, this is this is formed into a tail, and it has a little bit of stuff here, special stuff, poison, that enters into the egg. So it's lost all of its, most of its cytoplasm, so it's going to die. It can't live very long. It lives only 24 to 36 hours outside the testicles. And again, we have a polarity here. The egg has mostly only cytoplasm, yeah? A tiny, tiny little nucleus. So it's also going to die because it can't live with so much cytoplasm. So if nothing happens here, and the egg is falling through the tube, if nothing happens, it will be flushed away, it will die. So this is very important that the mother and the father forces are almost dying, almost dead. Not dead yet, but almost dead. And then they come together for an totally new life to happen. And don't forget, this has to happen, and this is happening all the time. Even if it comes together, it doesn't mean that a spirit is united with it yet. But that has to be the condition for a spirit to come in and start a new existence. And we'll see this again and again in every phase of development. Something has to come in and be born, something has to die away. So, you know there are so many of these, so this is coming down, and it's, if there's been sexual reproduction, then these sperm are coming up, and only one sperm will enter in here, and as soon as it does, uh, a shell forms around that egg, and now no more sperms can come in. That's a good place to stop.
we'll continue tomorrow. We were talking about the human being, so we're talking about the ovaries and the test testicles. And how from here we have the egg, and here we have the sperm. And they have half the what's needed for life, they only have half each of them. And they will both die if they don't meet. I don't know how long the egg lasts, but this is like 24 to 36 hours. Yeah, that's a good show. Okay, now, this polarity, you can't have creation without polarity. Things happen, are created through polarity. Yeah? So, this is, these are in the body, so this is warm here. This is, these are very large, you can even see the, one, the only cell you can actually see with the naked eye. Rest, receptive. The egg lasts about two weeks. Ovulation to the prayer All right, so the egg lasts a lot longer. The sperm, not very long at all. So, so more alive, actually. And, you know, I talked about a normal cell. You could really say this is the body of the cell and this is the head of the cell. So this also, the egg is more body. The sperm is more head and it's cold. So these, the, these drop out of the body. They, they, if, if it's going to be a girl, these go up. If it's going to be a boy, these drop out. So this is cold down here. These are nice warm inside the body. So it's active, uh, this is receptive and this is attacking, yeah? Fast, it swim very fast. But it's tremendous polarity, yeah? And in order for a new life to come about, this complete polarity comes together. Okay? So let's see what happens. Alright, so here you have ovary, so an egg. It, once a month, about, uh, uh, every four weeks, yeah? Yeah, 28 days. 28 days, and an egg is produced. So if a, a sperm, and there are many, 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 many sperms, yeah? But one sperm will penetrate. I don't know how to spell it, but this is called the zona pellucida. It's like a shell. Well, it's actually like, like your skin. You know, your skin is uh, what we call epidermal cells. Yeah? And they, they get closer and closer, they get very, very compacted. And all of a sudden, this forms a skin, compacted. So no other sperms can get in, yeah? only the one. So this sperm comes in, and basically it's, both, it's half of a nucleus. So now you have two halves of a nucleus inside, and they join, they come together. Yeah? So you have one nucleus. Now remember how special the egg and the sperm are. They are cells, but they only have half of what's needed, half the chromosomes. And they can't live. So they're almost close to death. The body produces them like it produces all of its cells, but every time it produces a cell, it produces a whole cell. And now it only produces these half cells, and then they come together. Now you have a whole. All right, but now this still cannot live for two reasons. There's not the right ratio between the DNA matter, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. There's way too much cytoplasm. Now, there are cells in here that protect, that, that grow these cells. Also in the, in the testicles, there are other cells that make the sperm. Yeah? And they nurture these cells before they are released. But what does that mean? That means the mother is nurturing these cells until they're released, or the father means it's part of the mother's life, or part of the father's life. But now this is like an egg, like a chicken's egg. There is a, it's not a real shell, but it's completely closed around, so it can't be nurtured, and it can't live. It's kind of like a stone, you know, the stone that's in the peach, for instance. The peach. Yeah, the stone inside of a fruit. It's almost physical. 
and it's not mobile yet. So it's falling. Okay, so here, we'll say there's an egg that's been fertilized here. And it's like this, and it's falling down the tube, slowly. Just like a cherry stone falling down to the ground. But it has these two forces, the, the mother and the father forces. So a lot starts going on, and it starts to divide. And then the divide divides. And then each of these divides. They each have a nucleus in them. And this keeps dividing and dividing, so I can't, so I'll try to draw it like this. Until it's like a backwards fruit. It's like you had the stone first, and now you have all the berries, like a mulberry, or a, <coughs> a, a, a black currant, yeah? or a, a raspberry, a blackberry. Yeah? And these all have, now, all of these begin to have the right ratio. They could live, but they're still uh, prisoners in the castle. So something starts to happen. That the, they start to compact, and they start to, in one area, they start to get more and more closer together, and they make, so they start to make a kind of space with fluid inside. These cells get smaller and more compact, and these cells are larger around them. And that leaves a space. Now it's important to realize this is not growth. This is called cleavage. I don't know what it is in Chinese. It just means splitting. This is not growth. Normally in, in a tissue, when the cells grow, they get bigger. And, and the area gets bigger. But this is can't get bigger. It's inside here. It can't get any bigger, so the cells get smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're not growing. They're just dividing. And it's also very important. Each one of these cells could become a human being. Each of these is a is a is a, is, a, is a, like a stem cell. It's a it's a it's a special, huh? A poten a, a proto cell. Each one of that's how you can have triplets, quadruplets, and I'll explain that later. But each one of these could become a baby. Yeah? And we'll talk about this uh, maybe this afternoon. How do you have twins? And what are um, identical twins? And what are not identical? And how do you have triplets and quadruplets? It has to do with these, this uh, process of these cells. So this is very important because if this space didn't open up inside. It's a very important space for later, but for right now, it's just full of liquid. It will eventually become the yolk sac. But it starts, it means that this is no longer heavy. It begins to have levity. Now it has a space inside. So it can float up here. Now it starts to float. It can float around here somewhere, and at the same time, this starts to break apart. And now it can attach to the uterine wall. This outer zona pellucida is breaking up. When it touches the uterine wall, then you start to have the villi come out. It grab a hold of the wall. Now it gets implanted in the mother. And this afternoon we'll, we'll go further. Okay?